We are pleased to present you a video abstract of our recent paper, Integrated Process Design for Biocatalytic Synthesis by a Leloir glycosyl transferase, UDB glucose production with sucrose synthase, to be published in Biotechnology and Bioengineering. The authors of this work are Dr. Katharina Schmölzer and Martin Lemmerer from the Austrian Center of Industrial Biotechnology, Graz, Austria, Dr. Alexander Gutmann and Professor Dr. Bernd Nidetsky from the Institute of Biotechnology and Biochemical Engineering at Graz University of Technology, Austria. Nucleotide sugar-dependent glycosyl transferases, so-called Lillois glycosyl transferases, represent a new paradigm for the biocatalytic production of glycosides as fine chemicals. However, the process technology for their effective use isn't well established. And we demonstrate in our study of UDB glucose production by sucrosynthase from Acididiobacillus caldus that integrated process development is key to the success of a glycosyl transferase process. We considered the interrelation of all tasks, including the biocatalyst production, the biocatalytic process, and the downstream processing right from the beginning. And this was essential to realize UDB glucose production at about 100 gram scale. About 60% of the industrial biocatalytic reactions use whole cells for reasons of time and cost. Therefore, the production of recombinant biomass suitable for whole cell catalysis was a clear requirement. And based on the necessary performance metrics of the biotransformation, a specific whole cell activity of 450 units per gram cell dry bit was set as a target value. To achieve this, we replaced E. coli shake flask cultivation previously used for production of SUSI AC by a batch fermentation process using LB medium supplemented with glucose, trace elements and additional salts. The time courses of glucose utilization, biomass growth and SUSI AC activity are shown here. The constitutive expression of SUSI AC in E. coli shifted the recombinant protein production mainly to the stationary phase and enhance the specific enzyme activity to 480 units per gram cell dry weight. Thus, the target expression level of SUSI AC was clearly reached. In the next step, we applied the whole cell SUSI AC to the synthesis of UDB glucose from sucrose and UDB. A 7 fold molar excess of sucrose was used to maximize the utilization of UDB in the equilibrium controlled reaction of the SUSI and for high conversion, pH control at 5 was crucial. The UDP glucose production had excellent performance metrics of 100 grams of product per liter, 86% yield based on UDP and a total turnover number of 103 grams of UDP glucose per gram cell dry weight at a space-time yield of 10 grams per liter and hour. We have recently developed a convenient and efficient chromatography-free downstream processing of NDB sugars from SUSI reaction mixtures. The downstream processing included alkaline phosphatase treatment for selective hydrolysis of the phosphomonoesters UMP and UDP into uridine and inorganic phosphate. Product separation from the remaining sugars, sucrose and fructose, and the nucleoside uridine was accomplished by repeated UDB glucose precipitation with ethanol. 30 grams of UDB glucose were isolated in a single batch with 90% purity and in 73% isolated yield. The overall yield based on UDB was 63%. The remaining impurities in the final product were 0.6% of UMP, 6% of inorganic phosphate, 0.7% of sucrose, and 1% of ethanol. Overall, the established process would allow the production of 0.7 kg of UDP glucose from 1 liter of E. coli bioreactor culture. The success of this holistic approach might support the development of other glycosyl transferases into industrial biocatalysts. We want to thank Professor Hans-Jörg Weber for NMR measurements and Professor Tom Desmet for the plasmid expression vector with the SUSI AC gene. And thank you for listening to our video abstract on our recent paper.